Have I been lying to you about my age all these years? How do you find your God-given purpose? And what do I think about vegans? That's what we're going to be talking about today in this Q&A. Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Honestly, it is a huge blessing having you guys. Uh, because of you, the ministry keeps going and growing, so thank you. And if you want to support on Patreon, head over to the link in my bio. I would be so grateful and blessed by that. So thank you. Now on to the questions. On to the questions. I hope that isn't insensitive to French people. Well, maybe that's not. A, maybe that's even more insensitive that I, I tried to identify that as a French accent. Apologies. Apologies. So age. What is my age? Have I been lying to you guys all these years? No, I have not. Um, I am 22. Um, but but I mean, there's been mass speculation across tabloids and such that have uh, speculated that I'm like 30 years old. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not 30. No, I'm not. What is my dream car? My dream car. I do not have a car. I'm just me straight up with you guys. I don't have a car. Um, I'm hoping to get a car pretty soon though, but it will not be a, well, honestly, any car is a dream car to me, but the dream car would be a Tesla. Yeah. A Tesla. I think I've seen enough people in Tesla's that it, where it's like, that's a cool car. It's not too showy, but it's nice. And, um, yeah, so that I'd probably go with the Tesla, um, favorite musical. Les Mis. I've been listening to Les Mis, uh, the musical, since I was a little kid. We'd always gather around the TV and watch the um, 10th anniversary on stage Les Mis performance, and uh, it's fantastic. I can still quote a lot of the songs, a lot of the lines, and um, yeah, I do a pretty good uh, bang-up job of Javert um, in my day. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, were, was I ever the edgy homeschooler no i had friends i think that were kind of the edgy homeschooler that would swear sometimes and stuff but i was pretty like a goody two shoes i i was not rebellious at all ever honestly i feel like now i'm like entering a little bit of a rebellious stage where i'm like i don't know like getting out some of that rebellion but i'm but in like the dumbest ways that aren't really rebellious at all anyway it's it's my own weird stuff but no i was not the edgy um homeschooler unfortunately i mean or fortunately um have i ever considered considered i forgot how to speak for a second have i ever considered living in another country yeah i've definitely considered it the, the question is how do you sneak across the border that's really the question to me because <laughs> I, I would love to go to the united states like tennessee or texas they got so much land down there housing's pretty cheap at least according to what i've seen um you know you can build a big like land uh i don't know cook uh, what, what, what do you even call it a commune I don't, commune is probably the wrong word, but a lot of houses and develop your own community and stuff like that. That'd be pretty cool. But what I've realized is that I cannot stand the heat. I like the heat, but right now it's 30 degrees Celsius in the studio and I'm dying. I'm dying. So ideally the perfect temperature is like 22 degrees Celsius or like 18 degrees Celsius. Um, but I've heard down there, it gets a lot hotter than that for a lot longer. I don't think I could do that. As much as I despise the cold weather here that we exist in for like seven months, I think it's just like, I don't know, the grass is always greener. I think that might be that might be what I'm finding out here, but I, maybe it might be fun to just head down there and see what it's like. How do you cope with discouragement when your plans don't go how you want them to? That's tough. Um, I'm trying to think of how I would usually deal with that kind of discouragement. Well, generally it starts off with like a regrouping process. Like, okay, I'm going to step back. I'm going to figure out where did I go wrong here? Um, actually, that's probably not where I start. Honestly, I probably start with like trying to unplug from anything, taking a total step back and distracting myself. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but that is probably what I do. Um, and then I have like a regrouping process where I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm kind of distance myself from the discouragement, from the hurt, from the, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm like, okay, what went wrong here? How can I not necessarily how can I improve in the future, but what went wrong? How can I reorient my focus to still try to uh, save some of the things that maybe I was disappointed by or, or reschedule some goals that I hoped I would hit? But then honestly, pouring into community that accepts you and loves you um, regardless of, of the failures that you experience or the disappointments that you go through. Um, somebody that doesn't, you don't need to feel like you're constantly putting on a performance for or acting like you're doing great. That's not the kind of person that you want to be hanging out with anyway, but also, but definitely in a situation where you're like, 
oh man, I'm really discouraged about this. This went really badly. You don't want to be hanging out with somebody that, <laughs> that just like feel always feels like their life is totally together. Um, and, and expects you to be the same way. So I think finding that community, that compassionate, curious community and friends that you can be with and and regroup from, I think that's the that's the key for me. What do I think about vegans trying to protect animals? So there's two things here. I think of the moral aspect and then the dietary aspect or 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 perspective. So if it's like a dietary reason, like it doesn't make you feel good, meat's just like not you just prefer not to to eat it because of, you know, dietary reasons. That's totally cool. You do you, right? Like I, I don't eat carbs sometimes. Um, and I, you know, the, it's not cause I like think eating carbs is wrong. Like bread are people. <laughs> oh man. What on earth? That's so dumb. Bread are people. Um, yeah, but it's not like I think their muffins are little like muff men, like little muffin men. Um, no, it's just because I, I just don't want to cause it's like not according to what I want to put in my body. But, um, in terms of animals, animals are in different spectrums. Like they're not, um, as high as us. And the Bible makes that clear. Like, I mean, we are put over dominion over them. They do not have the same intrinsic worth value that humans have. They're not created in the image of God. Does that mean we abuse them and, and, um, torture them? No, no, no. And I think that's where some of the debate comes in. It's like, is this practice, uh, what it, whatever it may be, is this actually taking good care and stewarding God's creation well? That's where the real debate and discernment needs to come in. And then people can have, a, you know, interesting conversations on that for sure. What's my favorite Christian movie? I love cringy Christian movies, but usually not for the purposes of like pure, um, like, <laughs> I don't know, like cinematic wonder, but it's more like um, laughing at them and enjoying the cringiness of them. Not all of them, but definitely some of them. A cheesy Christian movie that I love is Facing the Giants. It's one of the best. Like, I, I love those kind of, like, comeback stories of, of sports and underdogs and stuff. It's a great one. But actually, a great cinematic masterpiece is uh, The Prince of Egypt. And some people would debate me th with me. I said, that's not a Christian movie. That wasn't made by... I'm like, what? it's about Moses, man. It's about Moses. Doesn't get any more Christian than that. The soundtrack is fantastic. Oh, man. I, that movie is just so great. I love it. I'm having a hard time quitting porn what are some tips or advice um i'd like to point you my friend to a couple videos that i've done on this this is there's a nine step video uh quitting porn step by step um that i'm gonna link here or here somewhere there you can click on that and you can watch that and then also another video talking about how girls struggle with porn too because i think that's not talked about enough i haven't talked about it enough so that was kind of um i shared some thoughts about um, that issue in that video that you can watch as well. How exactly can I know what God's purpose is for me? Whoo, that's a doozy. That's a doozy. And I don't like, I'm just trying to process it through my own experience and how I kind of discerned what God's purpose was for me. And really it was like taking a step into, um, an opportunity that you could be used and you could be, um, useful in. So wherever those opportunities are for your life, right? In, in your life, where can you be useful? That's the real question that you should be asking yourself. What are you talented at? What are you gifted at? Or what, where do you see a need that maybe you don't necessarily feel like you have all the skills or talents or abilities that could fulfill that, but you can at least with faith step into that and see where that's going to take you. I think it's a process. Like it took me years to actually be confident in saying, this is where God wants me. And even now I'm like, yo, God, like uh, I, I need those little things of like confirmation and just like, God, am I still on the right path? You know, and that kind of thing. But I just think it's being open and being guided by love for God rather than fear. Because sometimes our purpose or where we're going to be useful is right in front of us, but we're so bogged down with fear and like, oh, is this what I should, is this response, is this all this stuff? And we're so bogged down and weighed down by fear instead of faith focused on God and following him despite how we feel. What are the aspects of daily disciple that has been most beneficial for your walk with Christ? I think for me, it has been the, the trusting, the faith aspect in like God using what I'm doing, like, cause it, it's all God ultimately, like it's so tangible that it is God who either makes things work or doesn't make them work. Or, you know, like I have no control over views or people that see it or people that are impacted. Like I don't 
that I can't control that. That is totally up to God. So it's a real, it's in, it feels like a shot in the dark. Sometimes it's like, I'm just putting this out there and then I'm just praying for God to use it. And it's been amazing to see how God has come through in so many ways. And just uh, my faith has definitely been built in that way. And just my understanding of how God provides for us. That's something that I'm really growing in currently. I'm kind of at the beginning stages of that, honestly, kind of recovering from this um, over I'm going to call it over dependence on my own ability to make life work and instead ha handing it over to God and really trusting in him and um, focusing on his opinion of me rather than what I perceive other people's perspectives of me. And uh, that is something that I'm really working on that Daily Disciple has been kind of a an avenue to grow in that way. What artist did you discover this year? Um, I don't know if I discovered an artist per se. Let me think. Um, I discovered a couple artists last year. John Mark Pantana, so great. Chris Renzema, great music as well. Love their like vibe with the, I don't know, it's a little bit, like it's Christian, mellow, indie, I don't know how to explain it, but I love that kind of thing. What are my biggest life goals? I have like three major, maybe four major life goals, maybe four major life goals. So one is to do Daily Disciple full time and focus all my energy and all of that into this ministry. Um, two, I forgot how to use my fingers for a second. Two would be get married, three would be have kids, and four would be follow God exactly where he wants me despite fear or anxiety and pursue him with courage. Those are my four big goals. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have another normal video for you next week, but I hope you enjoyed it and leave the comment down below with some of your answers to these questions. I'd be interested to know what's your take on these things. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. God bless.